So Vlad is going to tell the story. He's the narrator of this story. So I put the story together, but Vlad is going to be telling it. I'm going to tell it in my voice because he's only got a little voice. He's shouting in my ear, but he's not very loud when he's on the computer. The thing that he's a bit cross about today, the reason he's a little bit cross, he's a bit of a grumpy flea today, is because he really likes to bite the children that he meets. And today he can't bite any of you. Look, he's trying to get in and he can't get into the screen to bite you all. That's really frustrating for him. Always getting a little bit cross and his bearskin hat is wobbling a little bit. Okay, calm down, Vlad. I'm sure we can find you some nice children to bite later. Okay, we're going to tell the story of Florence Nightingale. I'm going to put Vlad down here so that I can hold the book, all right? Oops. Right, we're going to put him here behind me. That's a tiny, kind of dangerous place to put him because I never know what he's up to if he's behind me. But I'm going to tell you the story about Vlad and Florence Nightingale. And that's why I'm dressed up in this costume today. He's not behaving himself. He's going to have to sit there. There we go. That's better. I'm dressed in this costume today because I'm dressed like a Victorian lady because Florence Nightingale lived during the time of Queen Victoria. So I've got, I'm going to just stand up a little bit so you can see, I've got a big long dress on and it goes around the back, nice bit around the back to hold it all in, buttoned up all down the front. I'm going to tell you this story about a very special Victorian lady who behaved in a very unusual way. Most ladies were meant to be very demure and behave themselves, but Florence Nightingale had, a, had a, decided she had things she had to do in life and she was going to go and change things. So I'm going to tell you this story, Vlad and the Florence Nightingale adventure, but you need to join in at your end. I've got a few things that you need to do during the story. The first thing you're going to need to do during the story is when we get to certain bits, I'm going to ask you to sniff and see what you think it smells like. And I can see that some of you are with other people and you can tell the person you're with what it smells like. So when I go like this, I want you to get your wriggly noses like this and you're going to go, can I see everyone? Oh, brilliant. I can see some wriggly noses there. Good, okay, and then you can tell the person next to you what you think you're smelling in the story. The next is three actions. The second action is this one, scrub. You're going to pretend you've got a scrubbing brush in your hand and you're going to scrub all around you. You're going to really, you've got to really give this some effort because the place is filthy. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Can I see everyone giving a bit of a scrub all around? Scrub, scrub, scrub. Let's give Vlad a bit of a scrub. Oh, he doesn't like that much. He doesn't like being clean. Okay, the last action, the third action that we're going to do is during this story, there are going to be some people who aren't very well as the soldiers who have come to the hospital. This word says groan, groan. And groan is like this. It's when perhaps you're not feeling great and you go, oh, oh. Uh, everyone do that at home, groan, oh, perhaps hold your, oh, is it your tummy that's, oh, tummy is hurting, maybe your leg's hurting, oh, no. Okay, so those are our three actions. Groan, scrub, sniff. Good. We are ready to tell the story of Vlad and the Florence Nightingale adventure. Okay, I'm going to sit back a little bit so you can see the whole book and that way. Welcome to Skatari Hospital. I'm Vlad Flea and this is my rodent friend Loxton. This used to be our dream home. Look at it. Does it look much like a dream to you? It was perfect. Rotten food littering the floor and injured soldiers lined up ready for me to bite. But that was before they arrived. Here's our injured soldiers. Can we all groan? Oh, the injured soldiers are all feeling not very well, They're lying on the floor. And I think we need to have a little sniff what this smells like. What do you think this hospital smells like? Oh, I'm not sure I like the smell of that. 
this is very nice. I remember it vividly. It was a cold November night day. We were waiting for patients from the Crimean battlefields when the doors burst open. Instead of wounded men, it was a group of women. A tall lady led them in and looked around at the chaos. Well, this will have to change, she announced. As we stood there open mouthed at this outrageous idea, we had the thundering footsteps of quartermaster Quisby. What are you doing in my hospital? We are here to sort out our hospital, she replied calmly. I am Florence Nightingale and these are my nurses. Quisby's face went red, then purple, his fists clenched, and he took a step forward. We'll see what the doctors say about that. Florence Nightingale stepped forward too, holding up a piece of paper. They will do what the Prime Minister tells them. Lord Palmerston himself sent me. Whilst I was watching the argument, I hadn't noticed a strange creature creeping up on us. Poor Loxton nearly jumped out of his fur. By the time we've finished, you won't recognise this place, the newcomer chuckled before ambling off down the corridor. I don't think Vlad and Loxton are enjoying this much. It sounds a bit like things are going to change. We raced after him. Who are you? And more importantly, what are you? I am a tortoise, Jimmy the tortoise, he replied. We are here to sort out this hovel, my friend. And with that, he plodded off. Well, that was a lie. Jimmy the tortoise was no friend of mine. We turned to see nurses setting about destroying our cosy mess. Here we go. Are you ready? We need a bit of, a bit of this, some scrubbing. Everyone get scrubbing. Orderlies were forced to empty buckets of filth. Come and get all those edges into the edges, please. Don't miss any bits. Sweep floors and remove layers of dirt and debris we've been collecting for months. Don't remove any debris that you shouldn't be, shouldn't be getting rid of. Here we go, a little bit more scrubbing. On the over the following weeks, the nurses scrubbed everything. They even used soap. Outrageous. Okay. Can rest now. All our favourite hiding places were being ruined and every scrap of putrid food was being thrown away before Loxton had a chance to eat it. Each day became a battle for survival. Briefly we found shelter amongst the broken beds stacked against a wall. However Miss Nightingale had them removed and mended. Patients were helped off the ground and tucked into fresh sheets and clean clothes. Okay, I think it's time to have another sniff. What do we think it smells like now? We've scrubbed and we've cleaned and we've thrown all the nasty rubbish out. I think it smells a bit better. I like it better. Do you like it better, Vlad? I don't think Vlad likes it better. I think he preferred it before. We thought we might be safe in the kitchen where interesting smells wafted from the cooking pots of the new chef, Alexis Sawyer, but even the snacks of mouldy bread had gone. There was no proper food, just soups and jellies. We crawled into a corner where a bag of flour had burst, but the white powder revealed Loxton's footprints. Without warning, Miss Nightingale stepped out of the shadows with a broom, bringing it down on us again and again. We ran for our lives. That night, as darkness fell, a calm descended on the ward and patients prepared to sleep. Florence Nightingale had spent hours writing at her desk, but now she picked up a lamp and started the long walk from one end of the hospital to the other. She stopped to hold hands and whisper soothing words to those who were suffering. Men reached out to touch a passing shadow. Everything was peaceful. 
After months of running and hiding from the nurses, we were both exhausted. So quietly we crept into a medicine chest for some rest. For once we might sleep undisturbed because they were distracted by a guest. Mary Seacole was visiting on her way to the Crimean battlefields. Whilst we tried to snooze, we heard a rustling sound. I gave Loxton a nip to wake him. A strange hands appeared, removing bandages and medicine. We peered out and saw Quisby. It was then we heard Jimmy shouting, stop! Thief! He's taking the hospital supplies! Jimmy was still a long way down the corridor, but Quisby was getting dangerously close to us. We had no choice. I gave Loxton the signal and he sprang from the box just as Quisby stretched in. Quisby tried to hit Loxton, but in retaliation, Loxton bit him and the quartermaster let out an enormous scream. Everybody let out an enormous scream. Ah! That'll send everyone's parents running to see what's happening. The noise brought the orderlies and nurses running to see what's happening. I think Quartermaster Quisby is going to be doing this at the moment. Can we all groan? Oh. As soon as they realised that Quisby was stealing their precious food and medicines, he was arrested and taken away. Nurses bustled around, settling the patients and tucking them in again. Jimmy appeared silently behind us. You save the supplies. I could find you a corner that the nurses missed when cleaning. Loxton shook his head and I replied, there's too much excitement and not enough muck around here. We'll find another quieter spot away from those meddling nitpickers. Well, maybe we'll see you again, said Jimmy. I hope not, I retorted as I headed off. I think we'll visit that friendly Mary Seacole. She seemed to like us. She said she'd never seen such an incredible flea. She, good luck with that, Jimmy muttered. She actually said that she'd never seen such an incredibly horrible flea. Oh my word, that's the end. Now, Mary Seacole did actually write in her book what terrible fleas there were in Scutari, that there were, the fleas were enormous and really fat and horrible. So I don't think she liked you very much, Vlad. What we're going to do now is I'm going to show you a few objects that would have been in a hospital or in a Victorian home sometimes, and often they're objects that appear in the book. So I'm going to share my screen with you because I've got a few pictures and a few objects. I'm hoping I can show you the objects as well at the same time. Let's try this. If not, I'll show you them afterwards. So here we go. I'm going to share that. I can share sound as well so that you can still hear me. OK, excellent. And we'll run that. Good. OK, so I'm going to show you some things called Victorian artefacts. Artefacts are old objects that help us understand a little bit about what it was like a long time ago. So we'll start off. It's a bit of a quiz. So what I want you to do with this is, listen, I'm afraid there's no prizes, but just your knowledge that you perhaps guessed what it was. I want to show you something and I'm going to give you a second to either write it down or tell the person you're with what you think this object is. And then I'll reveal what it is. We'll do it a bit by bit as we go along. So here we go. This is the first object I'm going to show you. This is it. This is, a, this is the actual object. This is something my grandparents actually used to own and have. And I think I had it off their grandparents because my grandparents were both doctors. So they got some objects like this. I'm going to give you the clue. The clue is to keep this away from Quartermaster Quisby. So either write down or tell the person you're with what you think this artifact or this object is. What do you think? This look, the top comes out like that, it goes back in. Okay, I'm going to go four, and then I'm going to reveal two, three, two, one. Okay, this is a medicine bottle. 
So this picture here shows you Florence Nightingale's medicine bottles that she actually owned from the Florence Nightingale Museum. This box contained lots and lots of these little bottles with labels. Now, if you looked at a medicine bottle now, they should be safely locked away. But if you ever saw one, it would have a very special lid in it to make sure you couldn't just open it and accidentally take medicine because you have to be very careful that you always take medicine with a grown up that you don't just mess around with things like that. But back in Victorian times, it was just a little glass stopper like this that could go in it, depending, it could be really poisonous in this little tiny bottle like that. Okay, so that was our first object. We've got eight things I think to go through. This is the second object, here we go. This is it. This always causes a lot of fun. What this I will show you, this has got a video on it that I'll show you how it works afterwards. So there's a board with a sharp edge along it and there's a bit that goes on the top of it like this. Okay, what do you think this object is? I will give you the clue. The clue says, not all medicine comes in a bottle. So we've seen a medicine bottle. What do you think this might be? I'm going to give you the answer in four, three, two, one. This is a pill maker. So you don't always get medicine in liquid form. Sometimes you have they had to make the medicine as a pill. Now I'm going to see if I can just click this and I made a little video showing you how it works. This is Play-Doh, but we're gonna pretend it's, it's pill mixture that I've mixed up. And these two bits of this pill maker don't quite go together. They're two different bits I've put together. So it doesn't work as perfectly as it would do or smoothly, but let's see if I can get that. Oh no, I've gone backwards, hang on. Let me see if I can go back and play the video. Here we go. So. First of all, I turn it over and roll the two bits together. The table was a bit slippery, but I make a big, big sausage. Try again, make it a little bit rounder and make it all so that it's nice and even all the way along. So all the bits are the same. There we go. So I got rid of one bit and we put the other bit onto the pill cutter. And now I turn the sharp bit over and rub those two bits together. and out pop lots of little pills all exactly the same size that um, the, the patient could then take and if you really were good you could turn them over you could turn the top over again and make them into like capsules so that was the pill maker third object okay this is a picture of an object a big object in the Florence Nightingale Museum and this appears in the story can you remember what this was being used for. The clue says this, this invention was used by soldiers a long way from home. Now this was invented at this time but was used for another hundred years by soldiers who were out in the field in different parts of the world. So what do you think this is? Four, three, two, one. This is called the Sawyer stove. You might actually be able to see the sign above it. I couldn't crop that out very easily. Here it is in the story. Here's our chef, Alexis Sawyer. He was great man. He did some really good stuff. He helped lots of people who were hungry in really bad times during the Irish famine. And he created this stove that could be used to cook food when people were away from home. So a lot of the time they were eating cold food or food that was a bit rotten because it wasn't being cooked properly. And so the chef, proper French, really qualified chef, went out to Crimea and started cooking some nice foods for them. This relates to that too. Now I have this object here. Here we go. I'm going to show you this one. It's this big, so you can get a sense of how big it is next to my hand. What do you think this might be? Can you see? The clue is Monsieur Alexis Sawyer might want to use this in the kitchen. There was a clue in the story, something he was making for the soldiers to eat that he would use this for. Four, three, two, one. 
it's a jelly mold. So you might have jelly now, ice cream and jelly or cake and jelly. And this was what they used. It's glass. We wouldn't use a glass mold now, but they didn't have the same sort of materials that we have now. So that would be used to make jellies. And he made lots of jellies, perhaps not jellies we'd eat now. He'd make um, broth and um, meat jellies so that the men had lots of nutritious food to eat. Now, again, I've got this one here. This is this object. There's a similar object to this in the, in the Florence Nightingale Museum. It's slightly unusual. You can see more from the picture on the screen than from the one I'm holding, but I use this one to demonstrate in a second. What do you think this object would be? The clue says it must be thirsty work being a patient. Have a think about how the patients are in the hospital. Four, three, two, one. This is a special cup to allow patients to drink when they're lying down. So imagine I'm lying down and I want to drink. If this was an ordinary cup, if this was my cup here, and I was lying down and I tipped that up, it would all just pour all over my face. But if I have it in this cup, it's got a special bit here to stop the drink pouring out into my face. And it's got a special spout and somebody can sit next to the bed and tip it for me. That's why the handle is on the side, not on the back. So it's not a teapot, but it's like a special cup. So if I'm lying down like this, I can have a drink while I'm lying down. So that's that one. Now, this appears in the book, and I've taken a really cheeky picture of this one for you. It's a little bit cheating because the picture I've taken is like this, but actually that's not how you normally see it. What do you think this picture is? There was no electricity in Scutari Hospital. So think about what they needed to do at night. They're walking about, they needed to be able to see um, you can give yourself a bonus point if you know what the special name for this is. Four, three, two, one. It is Florence Nightingale's lamp. It's very clever. Look, it folds up like that. And she carried it around. Here we go. I've got some pictures. Oh, yes, there's the actual lamp in the museum. And I think the other pictures disappeared underneath the side screen, but there's the picture in the, in the book of her carrying it. And this has a special name. It's called a fanoose. A fanoose. I like that word, fanoose. So that was the Turkish name for lamp. And you put a candle inside of it and she carried it up and down the wards. The ward was three miles long. So every night she walked three miles up and down the ward, checking on all the patients. She did it all the time, all the, every night. She would check all of her patients, which is why they loved her so much. She didn't just lock herself in a room away from them all. She was in there looking after them. Okay, this is really heavy. Oh my word, and I've had to cover it up because it does actually say on it what it is. Okay, here we go. This is how big it is, and it is enormously heavy, really, really heavy. It's got a stopper on the top, which undoes. You can take that off. What could this be? It says the hospital might be very cold. Remember, there's no electricity, so you haven't got heaters, you haven't got radiators. Florence believed in fresh air, so she'd have all the windows open. In the winter, it was very, very cold. What might something like this be used to do? You put something in the top there. Okay, four, three, two, one. It says Dalton's improved foot warmer. So what you would do is you'd undo the top. You'd put really hot water inside of this, inside the hole there fill it up with hot water and then you could put it by your feet or in the bed before you got into the bed and it would keep your feet warm. It's like an old hot water bottle, except I don't even think many people have hot water bottles now, but hot water bottles now would be made out of rubber, be much lighter and much easier to use. This is almost, this is best used as a doorstop, it's so heavy. 
last object, and there is a big clue on this one. So this is an object from the Florence Nightingale Museum. In our story, we had a familiar character appear in the story. And this one is to show you that that character is real, was real. So I'm going to show you that one. It's Jimmy the tortoise. So when I went to the Florence Nightingale Museum, I was looking for an idea about how to write this story to include lots of factual information and to add another character in. And I found Jimmy, it was perfect. Florence loved pets. She had a pet owl before she went to Scutari. And when she came back from Scutari, she had cats during her life. She had about 60 pet cats. There's quite a lot of cats, isn't it? Does anyone else have 60 pet cats? No, I don't suppose so. I think I'd probably be seeing some of them on the screen. OK, those are our objects to share. And I hope that that's helped you understand a little bit what it was like. No electricity, nothing to warm you up, no lights to switch on. It was a very different kind of place and much smellier and much dirtier before Florence Nightingale got there. She made it nice and clean. She looked after the patients and she kept lots of fantastic records. And then when she came back, she taught lots of other people to do that so that our hospitals are nice, clean, healthy places now. Right, I have talked a lot and you have been amazing. And I hope you got lots of questions right. Can I see some thumbs up? Did you get some questions right? Yes, did you get some of those? Well, there's some that were a bit tricky, maybe. The pill maker is usually the tricky one. People sometimes think that that's to wash with. But um, it's quite sharp, actually, so you wouldn't want to be washing with that. What we're going to do now is I'm going to see if you want to ask me any questions about Florence Nightingale, about what she did, about the book, about Vlad. If you've got any questions, then you could, um, I think, is it best if, they, if, if we unmute or type in chat? Unmute, I think. Is there anyone that would like to ask something? Catherine, I think you've unmuted. Did you want to ask something? Like, why did Catherine Knight, where did Catherine Knight actually learn about Scutari Hospital? Like, where, where, where did I? Yeah, where did she learn about it? Where did I learn about the history? Yeah. So this is a really good question. There's lots of places that you can find out information. The first and most useful thing is Florence Nightingale wrote literally thousands and thousands of letters and bits of information down herself. So that's a one really good place. In fact, I think I read she, she wrote about 10,000 letters during her life. Do you like writing letters? Yeah. I bet you haven't write, written 10,000 yet though, have you? Yeah. She did live till she was 90, so she's got, she had a lot of years in which to write, but she didn't have anything like the internet or email or anything like that. So she wrote a lot of the information down. So that bit in the book where she attacked the rat, she wrote to one of her friends and said, I found a rat in the bed. And she was Florence Nightingale. She didn't scream and jump on the bed. She got a broom and she started trying to attack it. She didn't just run away from it. So that bit is actually based on a little bit of reality mm -hmm. as well. So there's her letters. There's Mary Seacole wrote a diary about what she did as well. She wrote it afterwards. She didn't write it at the time. So some of the information about what Mary Seacole's wearing, I, I got from her. And then the other really good place, I showed you lots of pictures from the Florence Nightingale Museum, and they've got so many artifacts and objects and things about her life there. Um, so the best places to find out are things that people wrote down at the time that were actually there and saw it and going and looking at somewhere like the museum. I love museums and you can still go and look at the objects online at Florence Nightingale Museum. Have you had a look at that yet? Have a chance if you do that if you yeah, go to, yeah, yeah on a school trip there that is great isn't it there's lots of information <laughs> i've been a few times and every time i go i still see something new that i haven't ever seen before yeah good does that help yeah fantastic has anyone else that was a great question has anyone else got a question there's a young man with a yellow top do you want to unmute yourself
Um, so where did Vlad go next, number one? And number <laughs> two, how did Palmerston know to send Florence Nightingale to the hospital? Um, yeah, did, so how, where does Vlad go next? Well, Vlad's been into a few different places. Um, the fleas get everywhere, unfortunately. <laughs> so he's, um, he's been to the First World War. Um, he's been flying over the trenches with, um, with, a, with a pigeon that time which was good fun because he saw lots of different people by flying over the top of them. Um, he's been to space on a dog called Strelka. So that, that was a pretty um, amazing adventure, been in the Great Fire of London. And he has been, latest one, he's, he's been to Egypt, to Tutankhamun's tomb. He had an owner who was a, a tomb painter. So he got to go along to... Um, to, to watch Tutankhamun's tomb being filled up with all that gold and all those amazing objects. Um, have I missed one? I feel like I've missed one. Where else have you been, Vlad? No, I think that's it. He's had five adventures. Sorry, what was the second part of your question? You asked about... Where did um, Palmerston... How did Palmerston know to send her to the hospital? Good question. So um, at the time, it was a big scandal. There was lots of reports coming out in the newspapers that the soldiers were getting very sick and dying. So there was a war going on, but it wasn't just the war that was killing the soldiers. They were going to the hospital and they were dying of diseases that they shouldn't have been getting. They were getting sicker in the hospital. And it was a very, very big scandal. And everyone got really, um, ang uh, you know, quite rightly, got very angry about it. And they decided something needed to be done. And Florence wasn't a quiet, gentle kind of person. So she decided she was going to be the person who did it. She knew Palmerston, she knew a lot of the important people and she campaigned to be able to be sent out there and they raised lots of money and sent her. So it was because of newspaper reports um, basically telling everybody. Unfortunately, the hospital was built in a very bad place. So it, she was able to change lots of good things, but she didn't change everything, unfortunately, because it was already built over what we'd call an open sewer. So at the moment, when we go to the toilet, everything gets flushed away, it goes away in pipes and we never see it again. Unfortunately, it wasn't that clean and nice back in Victorian times or in Scutari Hospital. So that's why good investigative journalism is still really important. And it shows how badly I've said that because it came up strangely <laughs> in the bottom. Good question. Thank you for that question. Right. We have another young man at the top who wants to ask a question. Um, 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 what? Do you want to give someone else a chance? Though? Okay, I just forgot what I was about. Don't worry, think of it and hold on to it and we'll come back to you, okay? <laughs> Has anyone else got a question in the meantime? I can't see everybody on the screen, I don't think. Is there anyone trying to show me that they've... Have you managed to think of it again? If not, if you have, if any of you have a question that you go away and you think about the story and you think, oh, I wonder what the answer to that was. If any of you do that and you want to know, then I have got a Facebook page and I've got a website with my email on it. And you can go on that and just send me the question. I'll keep an eye out. And if anybody sends me a question and wants an answer to it, I'll keep an eye out and try and answer it later on. Might not be able to do it immediately, but I will will check it regularly and see if you've put me any questions up there, okay? Have you thought of it now? Yes? No, it's gone. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Oh, yes, you have remembered it. Go on. You need to put your speaker back on. What were the types of, what, um, what were the types of diseases that were Yes. Types of diseases that the soldiers were suffering from. Okay, good question. So, um, this is goes a bit horrible histories at this point. So they have a disease, a nasty disease that's called dysentery, and that was um, that's a disease that you get through not being clean, through, through having the open sewers, so not having nice toilets, not being able to wash your hands properly. And that gives you an upset tummy, but so badly that you, you can't keep any, you can't, you can't eat anything or drink anything. 
And the um, other disease that quite often went through hospitals like that was a disease called typhoid. And again, that was caused by bad water. So we, when we turn our taps on now, our water has been treated and has been cleaned and has had things added to it to make sure it's really, really healthy and clean. We can just turn the tap on and drink it. But they couldn't do that. The water was coming from all sorts of horrible places. And they actually found all sorts of animals and and that water you're meant to drink was being mixed with water from the toilet. So typhoid and dysentery were the biggies, um, were the ones that, that really made people sick. Um, and it was, the Victorians did a lot to clean up water and to make things nice for us. And we, every time we turn the tap on now, I think we should be very, very thankful for all the people that work hard to make sure that we get nice clean water and have um, and all the people that clean our pipes and sewers to make sure that we are able to just use things really easily without having to think about it usually. Yes, yeah, so you're pulling faces. It's not very nice, is it? But it's also very useful to learn so that we we do be a bit appreciative of what we've got now. There have been some great questions. I hope you've learned some things about Florence and about her nurses and about what she did for us. Um, so the hospitals that we have now are because of the work she did over 100 years ago. So she came back to Britain and she designed hospitals. She decided that they had to be light and they all had to have sinks in the wards, they didn't have sinks. The nurses had to go a long way to go and wash their hands. They all had to have sinks. They all had to wash their hands. They had to have nice clean uniforms. They had to have healthy food. They had to open their windows and let fresh air in. And so all those things are things we're doing at the moment and saying are important at the moment. So she was really, really um, groundbreaking. And the work that she did is important to us still today. Now, I think you've all been amazing. I hope you've enjoyed the story. I hope you think you've learned lots of things. And unless anyone has any questions, I'm going to just mention that there are some other events going on. Um, Amanda, I don't know if you want to add to that. There's a definitely a nice event happening at the weekend about uh, cooking. Yes, Saturday morning. Yeah. We're going to so, hear more about Florence and her adventures with Alexis Sawyer and cooking. Yeah. So if you fancy learning about her food. Yes, absolutely. She's going to make a Victoria sponge cake. She's going to make a Victoria sponge cake on Saturday morning. I'm going to have to yeah. get some ingredients in, I think, because I definitely fancy a Victoria sponge cake now. <laughs> so that's 11 o'clock on Saturday. And it's in the chat. Fantastic. So if there's any yeah. information you want to find out about any of that, then you can go into the chat, have a look at that or go to go to my website and you'll find the link there to what's been going on. So you'll find the future events. I'll put something up there too. Vlad is just going to come in again. He's after all this talk of Victoria sponge cakes making his stomach rumble and he still can't eat any of the children. He's going to have a little bit of a little bit of a go there. OK, so anything you want to find out about that is on Reading Riddle. That's my web. My website is Reading Riddle. So any more information you want to find out about Vlad or the Facebook links or anything like that. OK, can we have a big wave for Vlad? If he can't bite you, can you at least have a nice wave from everybody, please? Yes. <laughs> Thank Fantastic. you so much, Kate. Thank yeah. you. Well, Thank there were you. some fabulous questions. Lots of lovely historians out there.